Welcome to the art project. We're going to do a little shading project, uh, but this time in reverse, we're going to use white colored pencil on black construction paper. And that's pretty much the only tools you need. Uh, I'm going to put a half inch border around my paper so that when I'm done, it looks nice and neat and professional. And the border also serves to uh, put a mat and frame on it. If I decide that I like it so much, I want to have it matted and framed. That doesn't happen very often, but if it does, it's nice for it to be there because uh, the mat will always cover up some of the paper. And so a border just helps to uh, make allowances for that. Anyway, that's the reason for a border. Uh, remember, you have to put two marks for every line that you make. If you want your border to be parallel with the edge of the paper, you have to get to measure twice on each side of the paper to draw your line and make sure that it's straight. Uh, on the left hand side right here, I didn't measure because I actually started the line right at half of an inch from the top. And so all I had to do was line up the top of both lines. Same thing on the other side. I actually started my line exactly at a half inch away from the edge. So the ends of both of those lines are accurate. Now I have a half inch border and I'm going to start this the way uh, you would start a neurographica. Uh, keep in mind, I don't know anything at all about the true nature and true techniques of a neurographica. I could be doing stuff all wrong, but I don't really care. I'm not using this for anything particular. I'm not even teaching neurographicas at all. I've just seen it and thought it was kind of cool and I'm trying, trying it out. And basically what I'm saying is I'm just making curvy lines across the paper. Um, you can do this as much or as little as you like. And uh, basically all I'm really doing is dividing the paper up and letting my sense of aesthetics guide me. Uh, there are lots of different ways to do this. This is just like, I don't know, I got to school this morning and thought, hey, let's try this out, see what happens. This is how you join each of the intersections. And this is not entirely necessary, and you'll see why in a few minutes, but I basically round every intersection off with a concave curve at each intersection on all four corners of that intersection. And now I'm going to do that all the way around uh, for every place where a white line uh, crosses another white line. One of the things that I did learn about this as I was going is that there are no shortcuts. Well, that may not be true. Maybe there is a shortcut, but as far as I can tell, uh, everything that I may have tried to do in order to make this go faster uh, did not necessarily serve me, did not necessarily make for a good, fabulous work of art. Uh, what I'm trying to say is uh, I have to color in each section just right. I have to make each intersection just right and I have to take my time with each one. I can't do like three shapes at a time or four shapes at a time or uh, smear it with my finger or anything like that. I have to shade in each section according to the rules uh, or the guidelines or the expectations. I'm not exactly sure what you want to call it. Uh, you'll notice here I also added some circles. I got a compass and I wanted to add a little bit more interest so I've added three circles there. I'm going to add a couple more. Uh, right now I'm adding white to the lines to make them a little bit bolder. Here's another circle. Notice how wherever the line crosses, wherever the circle line crosses the regular line, I am rounding it off. Ended up actually rounding off the corners that touch the edge of the paper too. So the rule here is, or the guideline for me, is I'm trying to make it as white as possible next to the lines and fade as it goes towards 
a central point kind of like I'm making a highlight but it's in reverse I'm making it go from light to dark instead of from dark to a light highlight all right well once I decided on the particular guideline or rule or whatever um, shading really really bright white on the outside edges of each shape and fading it to black as you get to the middle then the only thing I had to do was do that over and over and over again so uh, this took me right around probably five hours maybe six hours to complete um, so it should take what is that about five four or five class periods for a student if they were to actually uh, try and do it right all the way through and really take their time and really improve on every little um, section the um, things that I learned from this one of the things is that if you don't try and fade it which is what I was really trying to do was make it fade from you know bright white uh, imperceptibly to black then you know it looks like this but if you don't try and fade it and you have a white line a very distinct white line down the middle then it seems a little bit like neon so for my next project well maybe not my next one but for one later on I might actually try and make a neon looking uh, work we'll see what happens um, anyway uh, that was just some cool stuff that I learned. Uh, I hope you like it. Uh, keep in mind that even though this is tedious, it is also uh, just a way of zoning out. And it is also a way of practicing your shading skills. By the time you get to the hundredth little shape, you will be a master at shading if, and only if, you try to do it correctly in each one and you use it to practice. If you just kind of like hurry and shade or scribble it in or whatever, and it's not going to look great. So don't try and rush it. Work, work diligently. Don't play, but try and do the best you can. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Give me a thumbs up. Uh, leave a comment down below. Subscribe if you haven't already.